All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I am Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success. Today, we're going to be talking about secure private online proofing for school and sports photography. We're going to be going over how a Zenfolio event works. We're going to talk about keywording photos, creating a participants list, uploading photos, creating a Zenfolio event, and then using that participants list to bulk email your parents. Um, this is the landing page for an open event. Now you can customize this. It can look different. Um, you can have backgrounds. You can change the color. You can have different information in there. But basically what an open an event does is it lets people find their photos by entering a keyword in this little kind of search thing right here or in this case I've written enter student ID so with the idea being that this event would be attached to your school's landing page and then when they go there for that year's photos they would go to this page and then the student would just type in their student ID or the parent would type in their student ID and they would see just the photos containing that student's ID so just to show you really quick how it would work if I go in here and I already have this ID typed in here and I hit go it's gonna take me and show me just the photos that have been keyworded with that particular child's student ID. So in this case, it's uh, this kid's photos right here. I think uh, his name is Ben. And then his class photo or his amazing group photo that I photoshopped together in like 10 minutes earlier to kind of put in here, it was group photo, right? So he's gonna see all of his individual photos and he's gonna see his group photo. Now, if, um, if I wanna go see a different kid's photos, I would need to know that kid's student ID. So this is how an open event works, right? So if, if I know the kid's student ID, which I have a list right here, and we're gonna talk about this in just a second, but if I know that person's, another person's student ID, I can go back into that event, go to a little thing up here and put that student ID in and hit go, and it's gonna take me to see just that kid's photo or that kid in his group photo. All right, and that's the way an open event works. Now, again, like I said, there's two types of events that Zenfolio has. The one I'm showing you is an open event. We're going to go through the process of creating what's called a restricted event because it functions just a little bit different. It actually allows you to bulk email your parents, which is going to make things a lot easier for you and a lot easier for the parents as well. Okay, now the workflow for this, you guys might be wondering, well, I heard you mention that the photos have to be keyworded. Um, how do I get the parents' emails and all of that stuff? So I want to talk about that for a second before we kind of go into um, go into actually creating this. Uh, the first thing, how do you get parents' information? It's it's really simple, right? There's only one of two ways to get it. You either ask the school for it or you come up with a way to let the parents give you that information on their own. Now, I know a lot of school photographers, a lot of sports photographers who've been working with those schools and those organizations for a long time have established a really good relationship and they just ask the um, organizations for that information because they know that it's gonna help them uh, offer a better service, right? So they tell the school, hey, if you give me the information, your parent emails and all of that stuff, I'll be able to provide secure galleries for everybody and I'll be able to email them all directly to see just their kids' photos, right? And again, it's it's based on that relationship that they've established. So um, I know a lot of photographers that do it that way, the schools and the organizations are happy to give that information to the photographer. Again, they've had a relationship going, but I have also worked with photographers who are like, the schools will not give me that information. They say it's a, a, a privacy thing, and I totally understand and totally respect that. So when it comes to that situation, if you find yourself in that situation where the school's like, you have to give us private galleries for each student, and we cannot give you any parent information. Then if you were hanging out with us last week, I actually showed you a really great solution to that problem because the online pre-order that Zenfolio has is actually a great way to collect that information. And so then you can tell the school, hey, no problem at all. I totally understand that and I wanna respect your privacy. So here's what we need to do. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna photograph all the kids, but only if their parents have pre-ordered. And I need you to mass email out this one link to the parents for them to pre-order. And then when all of the parents go in there and they pre-order, you have that customer information field that we talked about last week, right? Where you can say, okay, I need to know this kid's student ID. I need to know what class he's in. I need to know what grade he's in, his teacher's name, and all of that stuff. 
Um, and so that allows you to collect that information and then export it as a CSV file, which then you can go in and kind of turn into something that looks like this, where you have student ID and their grade and their email and their parents' name and all of that information. And if you guys are not familiar or don't remember from last week the feature that I'm talking about, it's the pre-order feature right here. And then once people complete pre-orders, if you go into reports and payouts, you can actually go um, to sales reports right here and go to pre-order and you can export your pre-orders right here. And it'll export it as a CSV file. And there you go. You have all of that information that you can just clean up and use um, as a participants list. So that is the ways that you can get that information. Another way that I've seen photographers do it is just ask the school to email out a Google form or a job form or something like that. Um, and, you know, tell the parents, hey, this is for your school photos. I need to have your information. And then the school is not giving you the information. The parents are volunteering that information by filling out the form, right? So that's the key to making the Zenfolio event restricted event work is having that information to start with. Again, you have to either get it from the school or have a way to collect it yourself. Okay. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we need to get some of this information, this data into the photos. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Now, there's lots of different methods for doing it. You can use a QR code workflow. And if you're not familiar with the QR code workflow, basically the way that works is you have QR codes created for each, each person that's getting their photo taken. You photograph that QR code. You photograph the kid. And then there's a $10 plugin that you can buy for Lightroom from a company called Capture Monkey that will actually read those QR codes and put the data from the QR codes into the photos for you. I'm not going to really deep dive into that. There are lots of methods out there to do this. The, um, the key is, is that you have to get unique information for each person into their photo. So whatever your workflow is, even if you're doing a small school and you just have to write a log sheet or keep a log sheet down so you know what frames belong to what kids so that you can manually um, keyword your photos, you can do that as well. So um, we're going to talk about keywording the photos. And again, I'm going to be kind of showing you guys the manual way of doing this. However you do this is, is totally up to you. So I'm going to pull up Lightroom really quick. And the things I'm going to be using is just Lightroom. And I'm in library and the keywording toggle over here I have opened up and we'll be talking about that in a second. And then the other thing that I'm going to be using for this process is my spreadsheet right here. Okay. And so let's say that this was a really small school. Maybe doing this manually will totally work for you. If you're starting out with small preschools, there's not a lot of kids there. This is a good way to practice this and get used to this workflow. But let's say that this is my sheet and I am going to be photographing the kids in this order, and this all matches up, right? And so what I have to do is I have to have some kind of unique information for each kid, and in this case, it's their student ID, and I have to get that information into the photos of that kid. So for every photo I took of Luke, I'm going to keyword his student ID into his photo, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy his keyword right here, I'm going to jump into Lightroom, and let's say that this first kid right here is Luke. I think I said Ben earlier, but we'll say that this first kid is Luke. Now, this is the first four photos, and in this case, it's going to be rather easy. All I'm going to do is click on the first photo, hold Shift on my keyboard, click on the last one that says it's going to highlight all of those photos, and then I'll go down to the keyword tags and just paste in his keyword, hit Enter, and I've now keyworded those photos with his student ID. So again, this is the manual way of doing it. There are QR code and, and automated workflows that you can use. There's companies out there that will do this for you. This is a worst case scenario where you have to manually do it. Let's go to the next person. So I'm gonna go back to my list and let's say that that next person is Kessie. I'm gonna copy her student ID, jump back into Lightroom and do the same thing. I'm gonna select her first photo. Hold shift, select the last one, go over here and put in her keyword, right? A lot of you guys are already doing some kind of process similar to this. Maybe you're going in and manually renaming the file names, different things like that. So this is something that you can kind of work into your workflow um, when you're doing this process, right? Okay, 
Um, so now that I've got the photos keyworded, uh, and I didn't keyword them all, I know, um, but I just wanted to show you guys the keyword process. So I would continue to go through and keyword everybody's photo here. Then you're going to export them. Okay, and this is really important that you export them the right way. All right, so we're going to go up to uh, File, and I'm going to click on Export. And I'm going to bring this little export box right up here. And, you know, whatever settings you want to use for the location, the file renaming, all of that stuff, that's a workflow that's totally up to you and, and however you're already doing things. But what is most important that you do during this export you're going to go down and you're going to look for metadata right here. You're going to look for the metadata toggle. And you want to make sure that this includes all metadata. I think by default, Lightroom has it set to be copyright only. And what happens is when you export with the copyright only, all of that keywording that you just did is not included in the export. So when you go to upload these to Zenfolio and you go to do the Zenfolio event, it's not going to work because the keywords are not actually included because we didn't export them with the keywords. So it's super important that you go to that metadata and you make sure that that is set to be all metadata and then you hit export. Now, I'm not going to export these. I've already actually got these exported and uploaded to Zenfolio, but I would export these. Once they're exported out, what I would do is um, have them organized, right? And let me show you the organization that I have. So here in my uh, finder window, I have school pictures 2021. And then in here, I have subfolders. There's first grade, third grade, and preschool. And so these are kind of separated out by class, all right? And once I have all the photos exported, organized the way that I want, um, then the next thing that I'm going to do is upload these photos into Zenfolio, right? So um, we have them organized. We're going to jump over into Zenfolio. I'm going to go back to my photos page and we're going to upload these into um, this. Now, I'm, again, I'm not going to be uploading these. I've actually already done it, but uh, I'll just kind of show you how you would do it. So in this case, these are the school photos 2021. So I'm going to go inside of the folder that I've created for that school, click on the year folder inside of there, hit upload. And then all I would do from this point is just kind of drag and drop this folder right into there. And you can see it's telling me that I've already uploaded something like this. Um, so do I want to create duplicates? blah, 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 but I'll say use unique names because I'm not really going to upload this. And you're going to see this is going to create a new folder like this, and then it's going to kind of sub gallery out everything else that's in folders here, right? So when I upload this, in turn, what that's going to create is not this folder, but it's going to create this folder right here. So school pictures 2021. Right, and inside of that, there are all the sub galleries that we had organized by photos. So now we have this stuff uploaded, right? And I just wanna show you guys, if I go in here and I go to, um, let's go to, we'll go to third grade right here. And uh, I'm just gonna go in here and I'll show you guys. Remember, I keyworded these photos. So now if I click on a photo right here and I go to details, Right, you can actually see his keyword right down here in the keyword section. And um, this, is, this is important because if you make mistakes, you can actually correct things on, um, on Zenfolio as well. So if you accidentally miss keyworded somebody's photos, you can actually go in there and correct something that's wrong. But just to show you really quick, um, if I go to the next photo here, so if I go back up here, let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. If I go to the next photo, which is another photo of the same kid, the keyword is going to stay the same. See the keyword right here is the same. But if I go to her photo, that keyword is going to change because it's a different student ID. It's a different student. So therefore, the keyword should change. OK, and so this is kind of the first part of this. All right. The next thing that we need to do is we need to handle group photos. So if you take any class photos or team photos um, where you have a bunch of kids in one photo, or maybe you do sibling photos, how do you make that work so that every kid in that class can see the class or the group photo, 
without seeing everybody else's individual photos. Well, it's actually fairly easy to do. That group photo or that class photo just needs to contain the unique identifier of every kid that's in the photo. So if I go up here, basically this photo needs the keyword of all of these kids in here so that it shows up for everybody. Now I could just go here and manually copy it, come back over here and paste it, and with only three people in the photo, that's not that big of a deal. But when it comes to doing volume, you might have, um, you know, 30 people in this photo, and then you might have 100 classes that every class photo has 20 to 30 people in it that you have to do that for. And all of a sudden, doing that manual copying and pasting a whole bunch doesn't sound too fun. So I'm going to show you a trick that you can use if you, if you run into this situation and you need to keyword some group or class photos. So we're going to go back to the spreadsheet really quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a formula. Now, what we're doing is we're separating these by class, right? So I took a group photo of everybody that was in the third grade all together. And then I also did one of the first graders, right? Which is, which is only two. And so what I need is I need all of this information together. And so what I'm going to do is just scroll over here and I'm going to write a couple of formulas. I'm in Google Sheets, by the way. I don't know if these formulas work in Microsoft Excel, so that is one thing to keep in mind. So what I'm going to do is go over here, and the first thing that I need to know is I need to know what are the unique group or class identifiers, right? It might be the grade. It might be by specific teachers. It might be team names, How whatever you're photographing. Every group is going to have its name, whether it's the, the Mets or the Braves or it's Mrs. Jones's class or it's the third grade class. Every group that you photograph is going to have some kind of unique identifying title. And I need to know what all unique groups we have. And so I'm going to come right over here. I'm going to write the equal sign the word unique, I'm gonna do a shift nine, and then I'm just gonna select the column that has that information like this, and then do a shift zero, and that is going to go through this entire column and, and just imagine, right, that there's more than seven lines in here. Imagine that this is a school of like 500 kids and there's all kinds of classes in here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna get rid of all the duplicates and only pull out each uh, unique class or group identifier once. And then the next thing that I need to do is I just need to have everybody's IDs that are in the third grade in one cell separated by commas so that I can then copy and paste that one cell into the photo. So I'm going to come right over here to column J and I'm going to write what's called a join filter. So I'm going to put this equals the word join. We're going to do a shift nine. I'm going to do a quotation mark, comma, quotation mark, because we're joining by a comma. Then I'm going to do a comma, write the word filter in here. And then we are going to filter the student IDs by if they are in, by if this column equals this number. All right. And then I'm just going to close this off with two parentheses and hit enter. And what that did is that put all of the people in the third grade, their student IDs are here separated by commas. All right. And then what you can do is you can take this formula and just drag it down and it does it for everybody because it references this column here. So again, with just the few that I have here, it would have probably been pretty easy just to manually do this. If this was a school of 500 or a thousand students, that would have taken some time, and so it's much faster to do it this way. So now what I'll do is I'll copy this right here. So this is the third grade class data. I'm going to copy that. Jump back over into Zenfolio. Go to that third grade class photo and paste that in. All right. And so now that third grade class photo has the unique identifier or the student ID for every kid that appears in that photo. Okay. Let's go do the first grade really quick. All right, so we're gonna go find that first grade. We'll copy this in here. And if you guys are like, I'm totally lost, I don't understand why we have to have unique identifiers, it's all gonna make sense here in just a second, I promise. So I'm gonna click on their class photo, go to details, and I'm just gonna paste in that that has both of their student IDs and hit save. Okay, so we've gone through 
um, keywording the photos, how the e open event works. I've showed you guys how to upload everything, how to organize it, how to keyword the class photos. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of creating that restricted event that I was talking about earlier. All right. And this is where we need to bring in the parent data that we have right here. Okay. So I'm actually going to delete this over here because I don't need it. And what I'm going to do is I am going to download this. Now, this is a participants list. What is important for you to have in a participants list is this, the parents' emails and a unique identifier for each student that's in here. Any extra information that you have can be helpful, but it's not necessary. One thing to keep in mind is that every participant on here does have to have their own unique identifier. So Luke's student ID cannot appear anywhere down here below where it will break the system and it won't work because it's a unique identifier specifically for Luke. Okay. Um, and if the school doesn't have student IDs, there are tons of different ways that you can create random numbers and random identifiers for this because Zenfolio actually generates random passwords for everybody. It does not use the student ID when you're doing a restricted event. It can, but it doesn't have to, and I'll show you that. Um, okay, so I'm going to download this because this has the important information. It has the parents' emails, the student ID, everybody's names. I'm going to go file, download as a comma separated value sheet. All right, and I'm just going to save this here and I'll call this school data. Save it. And now we're going to go back into my Zenfolio account. I'm going to go to where I uploaded that. Uh, folder for the school right here. So this is the one I was showing you guys earlier, but this is the one that uh, we're gonna turn into a restricted event, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to the folder and we're going to click this little drop down, and I'm gonna say convert to an event, all right? Okay, so here is where you have the option of choosing an open event or a restricted event. The difference between these two is that an open event does not require you to upload a participant data sheet or a participant's list, right? It was that thing that I showed at the very beginning of the live stream where people could just go and enter that uh, student ID and go right to the kids' photos. That's how an open event works. If you photograph uh, sports, you could be keywording the kids' photos with their jersey numbers and then using an open event to where parents would just go enter the jersey number and it would go right to the kids' photos or it would go right to all of the kids' photos who have that jersey number. A restricted event requires you to upload a participant's list because Zenfolio is going to generate random passcodes for you and we're not going to use the student ID as the password to get to the photo. It's just going to link the photos to that parent's data. All right, so what I'm going to do is come right down here and import my CSV file. So I'm going to say choose file. Uh, and that's that CSV that I just downloaded. Let me see right here. I'm going to hit open, upload file. All right, and then it's going to say, what is the unique ID column? And so what this is asking me is it's asking me what column on this CSV file did I keyword into the photos? And in this case, it's gonna be that student ID column right here, okay? So I am going to select student ID. Next, it wants to know what I wanna use for passcodes. And like I said, I could use the student ID, but in this case, I'm actually gonna let Zenfolio generate random passcodes for me, and then we're gonna hit save. Okay, and so now it says that the participants list uh, has been uploaded and I'm going to click save and you'll notice that that icon changed to kind of look like a calendar. That means it's now an event. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on this event, go to access, and I'm going to take the password off. Make sure that this is not showing up in search results and hit save. Now this is basically a um, an event where people can only get access to the photos with the correct link and the correct password. And really what we want is we want this to be email access only, right? So we're going to email the parents using that participants list. 
uh, and they're going to have direct links to go right into their kids' photos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here to the event, and then we're going to go to event settings right here, and you can click on view list of participants. And what this is going to do is this is going to take you to where that participants list was uploaded into the Zenfolio system. You can see everybody's names here. You can also see how many photos each person has. You can see their unique generated password that's different from their student ID. So this is the password that Zenfolio created for them. And you can even check yourself here, right? So this is where you can kind of do some spot checking to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes. And what I mean by that is when you click on these numbers, you can actually view the photos for that participant. So if you're looking through here and you're like, okay, um, I see Myra only has one photo, you can click on that number and it's going to open this up and show you the photo that's associated with her. And so you can kind of spot check and make sure, okay, this person has three. Let me make sure that those are the correct photos. Yes, because it's his two individuals and the group photo. So you can actually see the photos that are just associated with that kit. All right. And so this is where all of that work that we just did, this is kind of the aha moment of where it really comes into play and makes this feature amazing. Right. Again, I'm only doing this with six kids. Think about this in the form of having hundreds of kids who all need their own unique passwords and their own unique gallery, so to speak. How long that would take you to make a separate gallery for every kid, put in their password, and then tell the parent what the password is. Right. That's where this feature is going to come into play. That way you don't have to do all of those manual steps because now all you have to do is go to send email. And it's going to populate this with a template that Zinfolio has already created where it's going to email everybody on that list a link to see just their kids' photos. All right, and it's pulling the information over here. So just to show you a really quick a preview, if I hit continue to preview, it's going to send everybody an email that looks like this. And everybody's email is going to be different because it's going to show their kid's photo, give them their kid's password, as, a, as well as a link to see just their kid's photos. So everybody's email will be different. They'll get an email that looks like this. They can click on this link. I'll open this in a new incognito window really quick. And it's going to take me right to see just my kid's photos and his class photo. All right. Um, and then from here, they can click on the photo. And if you have it for sale, obviously, they can purchase the photo. Now, the last thing that I'll kind of show you guys here is if we go back to edit message in here, the available substitutions, this little side section over here, if you look at this, you should notice that some of these are all of these except for the passcode match my column headers. And you can actually use those to customize this email. And so instead of just saying a generic hello, you could say hello to that child's parent because I could come over here and I could say copy this right here, parent first name, paste this in here, right? Paste it in there, put a comma. And when I do that, now it adds that child's parent's first name here. So it says, hello, Lucas. So if we go back and we look at Luke's, or if we go back and we look at Hamilton's line of data here, his parent's first name was Lucas. If this was um, Kessie's email, for instance. So if I go down here and I hit cancel and I go find Kessie and I want to just send out her email and I copy parent first name and put it over here. And now I hit continue to preview. Now it says, hello, Emma. And you can do that once and mass email everybody and it's gonna update and say hello to every parent based on that set of data, all right? And so you can do a lot with that list, but then you hit send email, it's gonna email everybody. They're gonna have links to go see just their kids' photos. And you don't have to communicate with 100 parents or 500 parents or 1,000 parents. Here's your gallery, here's your password, here's your gallery. You don't have to send out uh, separate emails for everybody. This is gonna bulk email everybody for you.